Hi everyone, today we're going to be breaking down the New Hampshire debate. I've just finished uh, taking a look at this New Hampshire debate and uh, let's just turn up the brightness there. Uh, and it was very interesting. A lot of fire was drawn between the different candidates. They, uh, the, there were fireworks and uh, they went after each other. And it, I think a lot of them just realized it just got real in New Hampshire. Iowa is down for the people who didn't do well in Iowa. They have to do well in New Hampshire or else it's pretty much game over. So New Hampshire debate breakdown this one was hosted by abc news wmur and apple news um so yeah uh let's start off uh i've got some new graphics here uh, uh that'll come on the next slide but candidates performances there's going to be three main categories the first category they did well uh, um they did somewhat poorly and actually there's going to be one big winner not one big loser that so there's going to be they did well they did somewhat poorly and one big loser and then i'll give my over rankings at the end one through seven in terms of who did the best so let's start off here uh joe biden here there's some new graphics uh each candidate will have its own slide while i just discuss their performance and then uh, on the next slide, I'll show you uh, the overall like group that they're in. So, pros. He had much more energy going into this debate. He was focused. He was, you know, at times a lot more sharp. Um, he looked strong, and and he he looked like the he he looked like he had a lot more energy in this debate than previously it looked like he wanted to be there it looked like he he was coming there to actually win and not just to you know play nice with the other candidates uh he took on sanders directly over his health care plan i thought that that was an effective attack against sanders um so yeah joe biden i thought did well he looked strong he looked strong in this debate however cons he just needed a bit more than what he gave us you you've just finished you're the former vice president the national front runner or now former national front runner and you just came fourth in the first primary okay there's no excuses you 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 got to you got to get it together man and you know he needed to he needed to have a better night he needed to draw a bit more blood than he actually ended up doing um and and that's important and another um another poor point of his performance he conceded right up front about Iowa and New Hampshire he said you know, we, we took a gut punch in Iowa and he said, I'm probably not going to do well in New Hampshire. I, I think his campaign probably told him, OK, go on the debate stage and lower expectations for New Hampshire. But he took that in the totally worst way. He, what, what you're sort of meant to do, you're meant to sort of say, you know, uh, you're meant to give confidence to your supporters without like conceding the state you're meant to lower expectations but without conceding the state and without sort of you know giving ammunition to the, your opponents and now all of his opponents can go and say if um y you don't want to lower expectations that low because then your supporters will think oh well you know he's not going to win and so i won't go out and then that further exacerbates that uh that downside there for joe biden but I mean, he needs to get it together. Um, and you can't just concede states. You can't just say, we'll lose Iowa, we'll lose New Hampshire, we'll lose Nevada, and then, oh, well, South Carolina's going to hold on. It's, it's not how it works, uh, and, and that's very important. Okay, so overall, he did somewhat poorly. So, uh, yeah, I've already gone through that, but... Um, but yeah, uh, all of these candidates in no particular order at all. Uh, just so I'm trying to sort of... Uh, Joe Biden was sort of leader. He was in the middle of the stage. Then I'll go to someone sort of on the outer edges and then sort of maybe someone in the middle. Just, just sort of mixing it up, not going in rigid order from 
top to bottom in terms of polling or bottom to top. Um, so yeah, Andrew Yang. Uh, <laughs> what can I say about Andrew Yang? I barely got to hear him. Um, so Andrew Yang, what he needs to do in this debate, he needed to knock it out of the park because he uh, he did not do well in Iowa. Uh, I know his campaign says you know Iowa not our not our country will but will do well in New Hampshire. But I, I mean, he he uh, he needs to get it together. Um, I think this probably could be his last time on the debate stage, and quite frankly, he did terrible. He did not do well at all. But I I will give one pro. Uh, he you know he hammered home his UBI. He uh, he he sort of he he did say stuff about his UBI. I think he may have taken on Senator Warren a little bit and Mayor Buttigieg a little bit. Uh, and obviously back on stage, it's always important for the campaigns to keep your candidate on stage, to keep you at least a little bit, in theory, in, in the national conversation. However, cons, what is going on with Andrew Yang? In the previous debate, uh, the, the last one he was in in December, he did quite well, actually. You know, he was he was able to hammer home his message and he also didn't just talk about UBI, he talked about other things as well. Um, but he was just not there in this debate. He got by far the lowest amount of speaking time in this debate. He was not energetic at all and he really needed a big night that he did not get today. And obviously that puts him in the loser category they did somewhat poorly and I would say it's a bit more than somewhat if there if I did have this one big loser category Andrew Yang would probably be that one big loser he he didn't stand out um I I know I do have some Yang supporters in my audience um I'm sorry but uh, I I really didn't think he hammered it home tonight um next Elizabeth Warren uh Elizabeth Warren very interesting character. Um, pros, she went after Buttigieg. Buttigieg gave, quite frankly, a poor answer on race. And then Elizabeth Warren flatly said, no, it was not good enough. That was one of her strongest moments of the night. Also, when she was talking, I believe, about abortion. Uh, I believe she was talking about that. And, and that also was a good moment for the Massachusetts Senator. Also when she went after Mike Bloomberg, again, quite good. Um, just flipping over here, in terms of the cons, uh, I really didn't think she was really there tonight. Where was she for most of the fiery conversations? She was either not talking at all, or she just sort of was talked for you know 90 seconds, however long the questions were, 75 seconds. And just delivered her usual stump speech, and uh, and didn't really add anything to the debate. She needs to get off the stump speech. She needs to get off, you know, talking about, you know, it works great for these people, but it's not working great for. She's re re seriously repeating the same things. I I was following along with one of her speeches, and I could actually. I've, I've heard it in previous debates so many times I could actually say what she was about to say and then she said that exact thing she needs to get off the stump speeches and and get moving um but yeah Elizabeth Warren uh she also needs to go after Buttigieg harder Warren and Buttigieg they're each other's main competitor there's only room for a maximum of one of them in the race not both they need to figure that out um and yeah, okay. Next, uh, and then obviously, she did somewhat poorly. Again, in no particular order. Uh, I guess they might actually be in a particular order. That was just a random order. Pete Buttigieg. Uh, Pete Buttigieg. Wow, this is definitely a debate for Pete Buttigieg. Um, pros. I I don't know whether to consider this a pro or a con. He was under fire so many times in this debate. Klobuchar, Biden, Sanders, Yang, Warren, all of Steyer even, all, all, that's actually all the candidates, 
all at one point taking a shot at Buttigieg, uh, attacking, that shows that you're the front runner, it shows strength, uh, and he was able to fend them off, most of them, quite well, um, right, so Pete Buttigieg, interesting, and he was able to fend those attacks off, like, relatively well. Cons, his answer on race was very very poor when the abc news moderator was pressing him on race and on south bend he he really did not give a sufficient answer for most people and he uh he really sort of just went back to his old sort of stump speech and and that just isn't it, it just isn't good enough i mean at this point you need to be drawing fire with your opponents you need to be taking risks um Another thing, he needs to get off the platitudes and cliches. I mean, we've had enough of the kid play here. But we need to get going. I mean, en- enough of the enough of the platitudes, enough of the enough of the cliches. Um, he he really needs to uh, he really needs to get going on this one. Uh, and I uh, you can probably guess he did it well. I mean, he did he did. Uh, 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 he's sort of in between well and poor. Like, he, he did fine in that he got attacked, but he was able to fend them off well. But then some of his other answers weren't all that good. But uh, may, maybe, actually, maybe I might change that into he, he did poorly, but he, he's sort of in between. Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer, um, pros. He actually turned up to this debate, which which was a plus. Uh, in previous debates, he had just dropped into the background for the vast majority of the debate, a bit like Yang did this time. He was much more energetic this time. He, uh, he dished out some sort of half-hearted attacks. Um, by far best debate performance so far. Cons, you, you got to stop saying, you know... And I so much agree with my good friend, Senator Sanders, or I very much agree with my good friend, the, the former vice president. And it's like, I mean, get on with it. Like, you, 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 don't, just, you don't just call everyone, I agree with, I agree with. You need to be differentiating yourself with your opponents. Um, in terms of cons... You, you, you're not meant to talk about Sty, uh, South Carolina in New Hampshire. I know he wants to push that he's doing well in South Carolina, but, but talk about New Hampshire when you're in New Hampshire and talk about South Carolina when you're in South Carolina. But, um, but yeah, um, last two candidates. So Tom Steyer, I said, did well. Amy Klobuchar. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, she, uh, she attacked hard and that's really what she needed to do tonight um she needed to go after her opponents uh in a way that she did half-heartedly in previous debates but this was i think her best debate yet she attacked sanders and Buttigieg. she had much more energy she looked strong and presidential but she just needs to do even more i mean if she wants to keep being in this race she's holding on much better than i would have expected from the minnesota senator but um yeah i probably should wrap things up because my voice is starting to get quite dry uh but amy klobuchar looks strong and um cons she needed to do a bit more and next debate go even harder i mean if if she qualifies go harder I mean, it's it's go big or go home right now uh, for Amy Klobuchar, but she needs to go hard against these other candidates if she... Because, I mean, here's the thing. Attacking is high risk, high reward, right? If you're the front runner, you don't want to take any risk. You don't want to change the state of the race because you're winning. If you're not the front runner and you still want to win you need to take a chance because otherwise you're just going to be stuck there so you either you if you take the chance you either stay there that's a chance or you go up which is good or you go down but you, you got to take the chance of attacking if you want to stay in the race 
uh, and she needs to keep uh, she needs to keep drawing contrast with her opponents. Uh, so yeah, did well, and I really didn't realize they were actually all in the right order. But um, Bernie Sanders here, uh, Bernie. Uh, this I think was one of his stronger debates. Uh, he went after Pete Buttigieg on his billionaire donors and a few other things. He had strong answers, and here's the most important thing. He looked like the front runner on that stage. He really did. He commanded the stage. He took control of the discussions. All Most of the things were about his kind of thing. He looked strong. His answers showed he was a strong, progressive. Um, cons, uh, I would say overall keep doing what you're doing. I mean, uh, maybe go after Biden. I think that he should go after Biden on social security. Uh, especially, um, especially, you know, in South Carolina where African Americans rely disproportionately on social security. So, um, so yeah, Bernie Sanders did well. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, that's Amy. That, that's meant to be Bernie Sanders. Sorry, I didn't proofread that. Overall rankings, there's the overall rankings for you. And, um... So, Andrew Yang, 7th, I thought he was the biggest loser, followed by Warren, Biden, Buttigieg, Steyer, Klobuchar, and then my winner is Vermont Senator Bernard Sanders. So, that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great uh, rest of your day, if it's in the day, or good night. Thank you very much.